This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, Billy Wilson wants to know what was a bigger moment for you beating Ric Flair or beating Hulk Hogan? Oh, Hogan for sure. And Tampa. It's a big deal. Huge, huge. And, and Hey, I'm not a, I'm not a, where wins and losses and, and, and that go, I'm not some, some guy that keeps up with all that stuff. And, you know, because my loss record is about 10 times bigger than my win record, but that one and the one that followed, even with all the shenanigans that went on is one that you can go back 15 years later and bring it up in a promo and people will remember it, believe it or not. And, uh, it was big to me because I saw the evolution of Hulk Hogan. I lived it. I lived through it. I saw it and I saw what he meant. And it, and I also saw that he didn't get beat very much. Right. You know, you could run over him with, the, with a dump truck and then back over him. And I'm not sure he was going to stay down from that. And, uh, that was a big one for me. It really was, uh, you know, and the Rick one with where we were going with the angle was a big deal too. I think it was a little bit of a shocker to people. Uh, I just wasn't, it wasn't, it was, it was bad guy against bad guy with Rick and I, or good guy and good against good guy. However you want to look at it. It was good versus evil with me at Hogan. So it had that panache. Those people were pissed. That was his hometown. Great question here from Tad Brown. Did you or any other wrestlers, you know, have a personal ritual you would do before a match? Not like stretching or anything like that, but more of a superstition. I've seen a lot of guys go on and, and I can't tell you who, but a lot of guys go on a knee and, you know, cross themselves and stuff like that. Um, a lot of guys would go and get their back to everything and find a little dark corner and, and almost dropped their head. I don't know if they were praying or going over what they were wanted to do or getting their head together or just getting revved up or could have been any combination or all of that. But everybody had a, a warming up ritual that I saw. The only one that I even heard about, which is the entertaining one, is Jack Briscoe. Are you familiar with this? No. I'm talking, to, talking to Rick? I don't know this one. Jack would be at the bell would be ringing for the world champion, which was him to go to the ring. And he would stand up out of his chair, put his cigarette out, walk over to the wall, about two, one quarter push ups against the wall and head to the ring. That was his warm up. Two, one quarter push ups. I'm talking about no tricep involved whatsoever. Well, all right. I mean, it was clearly working. He had a hell he's of a career. He, hey, he's Jack Briscoe. Right. If you didn't like it, do something about it. <laughs> I don't know that anybody was going to try to do that. Uh, Freshwater uh, Aristotle wants to know what tag team had the best finisher in your opinion? Uh, road warriors was pretty impressive. Uh, power and glory had a yep. nice one. Yes, sir. That's one of your favorites, right? I love it. Did you ever meet Hercules? I did not. Really nice man. Really was very intense. Paul Roma listens to the show, by the way. Oh, really? Yep. Well, hello, Paul. Hello there. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, those guys, you know, they look great, Paul, you know, he could do some incredible stuff. And, and that finish was good with those guys. Uh, they were a good team to seem to jail really well. Um, I said road warriors, correct. Yep. Uh, help me out, Conrad, who had some really good finishes. Well, I mean, similar to the road warriors, that Steiner brother, top rope bulldog was kind of cool. Um, yep. It was, uh, any setup that involved Bobby Eaton coming off and dropping that knee off the top midnight express rocket launcher. 
you know, or that, or the rocket launcher and the press off into the splash. I mean, they were all good. They were all polished moves. Uh, to bring it current, I, I think a lot of fans like the Shatter Machine from FTR. I, I forget the name of what they're calling it right now, but I, it's always been branded to me as the Shatter Machine. So that's probably what I'll always call it. But that's a pretty cool finish. Yeah, I like that. I was kind of partial to the Spike Pile Driver. Yeah. Can't, can't remember who used that. A couple of guys. Yeah. They did okay. Yeah, they did all right for themselves. So, yeah, that comes to mind that that, that group of finishes. <laughs> Anthony Turner senior wants to know, you got any great Barry Wyndham stories? Uh, just Barry was living, living life in this business to the fullest extent. Barry Wyndham. There's a picture. Look it up. Uh, six foot five, six foot six, whatever. Long blonde hair, uh, single can drink like a fish and you'll never know he's hammered and drink all night long driving a white Porsche around everywhere. I mean, Barry Wyndham lived the life and he used his television time, you know, to it, to its fullest extent. You know, Barry was a guy that went out and he would go out, stay all night. Uh, if he was making a trip, he'd probably drink, you know, dozen beers and, and probably 150, 200 mile trip never looked like anything was happening or anything was wrong. I never saw him shit faced ever, ever, but pick you up. If you were animal size, set you on the top rope, superplex you off the top. Barry Wyndham could just do it all. And he just, you know, he used this business and, uh, what it was meant for it during his off hours. He used his notoriety and all that stuff to, you know, women loved Barry, you know, and you could see even when he was with us and he was a heel and he was a nasty bastard, man, those girls went crazy over him. So he's a guy that really enjoyed the business and the business enjoyed having him. He was a credit to the business. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.